Welcome to the V2V Podcast Survivor Series. My name is Marcus Parrish, and today we will be looking at a facility called the Heritage Community, or also known as Heritage Schools. So the first thing we want to look at is the Utah State Requirements for residential programs. This particular program is located in Provo, Utah. Residential programs in the state of Utah are required to employ a manager who will oversee the day-to-day resident supervision and facility operations, and a CPR certified staff member must be available at all times. All staff, volunteers, and employees will be screened and given a background prior to working with the residents or within the facility. Professional staff should include a licensed physician, licensed psychologist, and a licensed mental health professional, and any unlicensed staff will be supervised by a licensed clinical professional at all times. All residential facilities are required to maintain a minimum ratio of one staff to every four residents at all times during the daytime However, night staff may be reduced depending on the size of the facility. Staff in residential facilities will have a separate living space from the residents, and all male and female living quarters will be separate and supervised. A single bedroom may house up to four residents or two with disabilities, as long as each room occupant has a minimum of 60 square feet, including storage space. All residential facilities and treatment centers in Utah must be up to date on all safety and building health codes. Meals must be approved by a registered dietitian and all facilities are required to note and accommodate the special nutritional needs or allergies of the resident consumers. All medication, hazardous chemicals, and materials must be kept in locked storage and only qualified staff will administer supervise, and record medication dosage and effects. Provisions must be made for adolescents to continue their current education. The curriculum must be approved by the State Office of Education, as well as nationally accredited, and all teachers must be qualified in their area of instruction. Each resident will receive an individualized treatment plan upon arrival, and it will be updated as they progress through the program. Monthly schedules will be available to both residents as well as their parents or guardians upon request. Individual treatment plans may include skills development as well as a variety of counseling options, including weekly group, couple, and family counseling sessions. Okay, so now we're going to look at the Heritage Schools in their own words or who they say they are. So here we go. So the Heritage Schools are located at 5600 North Heritage School Drive in Provo, Utah, 84604. They continue. Heritage, one of the original residential centers, is a leading provider of residential care for teenagers ages 12 to 18. Gender-specific schools enable students to focus and succeed academically while working with master's level therapists to overcome or cope with mental health, behavioral health, and neurological challenges. The Peers Academy at Heritage is an evidence-based program for teens with social challenges, many of whom are on the autism spectrum. Elevate Academy is for students suffering from depression, anxiety, or who have had trouble or traumatic experiences. The majority of students at Heritage have been adopted. Our targeted academies and the combination of our boys and girls program comprise the therapeutic heritage community where students spend an average of 13 months healing, recovering, and preparing to return home to live a healthy and productive life. So we'll get into each of these individual claims one at a time further on but as we go on we look at the school overview and there are several of these which are somewhat contradictory which you may also notice as we 
go through this process. Uh, school type. They call themselves a special education school. They are part of the Advanced Ed Accreditation Program. Uh, grades offered 7 through 12. ADD, ADHD support, they say yes. Learning difference programs, yes. It was founded in 1984, and they claim to offer summer school. Academics and faculty. Uh, total classroom teachers, 18. Student teacher ratio, 6 to 1 with an average class size of 10. Tuition cost, $132,000 a year. Uh, addiction counselors, dual diagnosis. Uh, the Heritage Community is an addiction specialist located in Provo, Utah. Youth with serious emotional disturbances, individuals with co-occurring mental and substance abuse disorders, and individuals with post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, that's a, that's a large swath of, of treatment that they're claiming to offer on a whole variety of levels. So we'll see how this plays out as we continue. Uh, forms of payment accepted. Out-of-pocket. Uh, private health insurance for 30 days. Uh, payment assistance. Check with the facility for details. Their admissions director is a woman named McKay Trainer, And admissions associate, Cecil Elder, who will also get into their backgrounds a bit. They claim to offer sports, basketball, flag football, soccer, and volleyball. Extracurricular activities such as indoor swimming, performing arts, recreational athletic programs, <clears throat> climbing wall, equestrian program, hiking, mountain biking, snow skiing, snowboarding, and therapeutic recreation. Here's another blurb about who Heritage says they are. For over 30 years, parents and professionals have turned to Heritage to help them find the son or daughter they once knew. With years of experience and unmatched staff experience and tenure, Heritage is a special place where lives are changed on a daily basis. Two full gender-specific year-round schools with six class periods and rotating schedule enable students to catch up on deficient credits and prepare to transition home. Special ed teachers assist with students with learning challenges. Small classroom sizes provide for more individualized attention to our students. Two dedicated academies targeted on specific diagnosis make it possible for students to overcome challenges they and their families never thought possible. Full-time therapists provide individual group and family therapy on a weekly basis a team of eight residential staff ded dedicated to each gender diagnostic and age-specific home of 10 to 14 students build powerful relationships with students. These relationships create an atmosphere where students are comfortable expressing their feelings and emotions. We help students find their spark with the greatest variety of on-campus activities like drama, theater, equine, athletics, rock climbing, yoga, etc., our proximity to outdoor recreation provides students with world-class experiences such as mountain biking, hiking, camping, rappelling, and more. Over time, students and family dynamics change for the better. Relationships are healed, coping skills are developed, weaknesses are strengthened, and students are prepared for a healthy and productive life. Okay, the next thing we're going to take a look at is admissions. Their literature states, Our caring admissions team members have years of experience assisting parents like you who are exploring the possibility of residential treatment for your child. We understand that picking up the phone may be the hardest choice you make, but once you connect with a knowledgeable and compassionate member of our admissions team, you'll feel the profound relief that comes from getting the clarity and support you need. You can be confident in the guidance you receive 
as you walk with you through the application process. Rest assured, your son or daughter will have a safe, nurturing environment where they can heal, grow, and succeed. And now, who is part of this team? So, first we have McKay Trainer. She's the Admission and Family Services Director. McKay has worked at Heritage since 2007 and worked in youth treatment and education for five years prior to that. There's not any indication of where that was, just that she has been involved in treatment and education for five years prior to working at Heritage. She's the Admissions and Family Services Director and Foundation Director. Now understand that Heritage Schools is a nonprofit organization, a 501c3 a nonprofit corporation. So it is a listed as a charity, and we will get into some of what that entails a bit later. So Miss Trainer has worked at the school from January 2007 to the present, and that is about 12 years. Next, we have a gentleman by the name of Brooks Ballard. He is listed as the admissions officer. Brooks has worked at Heritage since July 2004, working as a morning counselor and home lead. He enjoys his current position as admissions officer. Now, something about Mr. Ballard. Back in 2013, there was something called a scholarship gala that was... Uh, organized by Ballard and he hired a company called the Grand Design to be the interior decorators for this gala. Uh, What the Grand Design says about this endeavor back in 2013 is taking true principles, techniques, and creativity to personalize your environment. Last week we had the privilege and honor to to decorate for Heritage Schools, celebrating our Heroes Gala. The purpose of the gala was to raise funds for at-risk youth in residential treatment centers. Many of the items we used were thrifted or second-hand, as the purpose of this organization is to give youth a second chance. And then they include some photos, and it's really not much to look at, but it's interesting to understand that this place that costs $132,000 a year and is a charitable organization hires a place that buys thrift store merchandise in order to decorate their big event. Just something to keep in mind. Then we have Jen Summers. She is listed as admissions officer. Jen has worked at Heritage since 2009 and filled several positions, including Courier, GS Team Lead, IEP Coordinator, Outreach and Admissions. While raising three children, Jen opened a preschool, which she operated for several years, and her husband, Steve, began working at Heritage in 1995. Now, going back to uh, Brooks Ballard for a moment, there is no educational information or other work history for him. Jen Summers has been with Heritage Schools for almost 10 years as the admissions outreach specialist. And then from June 14th to the present, she's also been a marketing and outreach specialist. Uh, She was the testing coordinator for a while something called the Courier Team Lead for about two years. And that's it. That is the admissions team. And how much, again, does it cost to send your child here to have them shipped away to Provo, Utah, to this facility? $389 a day. The average length of stay for students is 12 to 14 months. And previously, it was indicated that it cost $132,000 for a year's tuition. With this math, that rises up to 
$145,000 a year uh, are their scholarships. <clears throat> the information reads, At times we receive donations that allow us to provide partial scholarships. Please speak with our admissions officers to find out if a scholarship is currently available. How about insurance? Some insurance policies may cover part of t- the tuition. We will help you apply for insurance benefits. However, <coughs> however, the average number of days covered is typically only around 30 days. Parents should not depend on insurance to cover tuition. Next, we're going to look at the leadership staff of Heritage Schools. First, there's Jerry Spanos, LCSW, Founder and Chief Executive Officer. Their literature states, Jerry Spanos, Founder and CEO of the Heritage Community, struggled as a teenager in the public school system. But despite being overwhelmed by a traumatic education-based phobia, he persevered through high school and conquered his fear of failure. Ultimately, Jerry went on to graduate with honors and get a master's degree in clinical social work. So that's interesting in the sense that apparently he was able to overcome learning disabilities or his fear of education or failure without having to go to any kind of therapeutic boarding school. It says something. And what it says is that If it wasn't appropriate for this guy, the founder of the school, to go through something like this, why in the world would it be okay for any kid to go have to go through this? And now when I say have to go through this, I mean what really goes on behind the scenes at the so-called therapeutic boarding schools. And we will get to that. Don't worry. But first... We need to talk about some of the other leadership staff. Next, we have uh, Kevin Downs, LCSW. He's the chief clinical officer. Kevin entered the field in 1999, starting as a volunteer at an elementary school in a special education class. The people he worked with, he felt, had a gift for working with children. He later got a job at Heritage working in the equine program, Horses, He loved working with the students, but felt limited in his abilities, so he returned to school and earned his degree in social work. He worked at another facility for adolescents, but when an opening came at Heritage, he returned as a therapist. So let's take a look at this statement. So he was an elementary school special education volunteer. People thought he had a gift. He got a job working at at the equine program at Heritage. Now, generally speaking, horse therapy requires uh, certification. Now, I don't know if he received that certification or not. It doesn't indicate that he did. So that's something to be aware of. So he felt limited in his abilities. So he returned to school and got a social work degree. Worked at another facility and then returned to Heritage as a therapist. So he's been at Heritage for 11 years now as the uh, executive director and the therapy director. He did that for uh, three years, eight months. He was also the CEO and owner of something called Successful Therapy from 2005 to 2015. So, for 10 years, he had his own uh, therapy business. And that is interesting because if you're the CEO and owner of a successful business, why would you leave that to go work for somebody else? It's an interesting question. Next, we have Kevin Curtis, who's an MBA, he's the Chief Operating Officer. Kevin joined the Heritage team in 2015 as our COO and brings substantial business experience. Kevin's work experience ranges from being an entrepreneur, 
having founded a successful technology company, to heading a multinational division as an executive with a Fortune 1000 company. Kevin holds an MBA from the University of Oregon and a BS degree from Arizona State University. Okay, so what is his background? He started out in 1996 as apparently a vice president at Mentor Graphics in Portland, Oregon. He did that for three years. That's uh, interesting as a young man that he would be given the vice president title at a big graphics company. Then he became the president and CEO of a company called Global Sim for three years in Salt Lake City. He was co-founder and president of Hot Site Networks for 10 years and seven months. Um, looks like a tech company. He worked as an adjunct faculty at the College of Business at the University of Phoenix from 2003 to 2016 for 13 years at the Utah campus. Next, we have Eugene Marshall, LCSW. He's the clinical director of the Elevate Academy. And his statement is, Eugene has worked with adolescents since 1995, beginning at Heritage as a residential staff member. Through this experience, he decided to work with students as a therapist. It was through role model therapists at Heritage that he learned that having a relationship with a student is imperative if you are to help them overcome whatever issue they are facing. Quote, if a healthy relationship is developed, then positive change can occur. Watching students at Heritage overcome serious emotional or behavioral issues is very rewarding to me as a therapist, unquote, he says. I look forward to coming to work because each day brings a different situation, some difficult, but also some very positive. Now as the clinical director of the Elevate Academy, he is driven to help students and families progress and heal from the many adverse experiences they have endured. Now there's no indication of where he got his master's degree, which is concerning. Next is George Ballou, LCSW. He's the clinical director of the Peers Academy. George began working at Heritage in 2006 to find out if he wanted to specialize in treating teens and families as a therapist. He says the answer was a resounding yes. He finished his bachelor's degree of psychology with a minor in business management and went on to get a master's in social work. In the years since leaving Heritage to enter graduate school, he facilitated child visitation between divorced parents developed an outpatient group therapy program for Salt Lake City's mental health center, worked for Child Protective Services, and ended up at the Wyoming State Hospital as clinical director of its group therapy program and developed a substance abuse track. He says he got a call from Heritage about a position for a therapist to focus on staff training. George says he always wanted to work at Heritage because he feels so comfortable with the relationship-based way of helping the students. There are a lot of treatment centers out there, but none of them felt like Heritage to him. Being a nonprofit means everything Heritage does goes directly toward helping the kids. He goes on, I am honored to serve as the clinical director of the Peers Academy in the Heritage community and am humbled to work with the most caring and de- dedicated team I've ever met. Grounded in the neurobiology of trauma and neurodevelopment, we aim to develop connections, resilience, and growth by focusing on attachment and caregiving systems, elements of self-regulation, developing healthy self-identities, and watch as other executive functions and social skills develop due to new neuroplasticity. Now, he's saying several different things here, which are worth mentioning. So he's talking about trauma, but he also seems to be talking about organic brain disorders and neuroplasticity, meaning new neural pathways and the ability for the brain to make new connections based on experience and um, treatment. So, he does, let's see, 
He also does not list where he went to school. But he had a lot of different experience and ended up at Heritage after a lengthy career elsewhere, which also is something to think about. He's also the Government Relations Committee member for NATSAP, the governing body that uh, oversees therapeutic boarding schools, which is also of some concern because you have the governing body with people that they're governing within the organization. Ah, here it is. He did, he does list it. He went to BYU, got his BS in clinical and developmental psychology with a minor in business management and got his master's degree at the University of Utah. So I stand corrected. It does list where he went to school. Then we have Elena Chatterley, LCSW. She's the clinical director of the Launch Academy. Elena first worked with teens as a trail walker for a wilderness program in Arizona. She says they spent weeks living in the desert, hiking while carrying powdered food and meager possessions. She enjoyed the intense connections made with those students and enjoyed the natural consequences that spoke much louder than any, quote, therapy, unquote, could. Shortly after that, she completed a master's degree in 2005 and has been with Heritage ever since, continuing her emphasis on natural consequences and self-directed change. She has also worked in substance abuse recovery, outpatient individual and couples counseling, and outpatient children's play therapy. She has been with Heritage for 13 years, 11 months. Elena also was on a talk radio show in L.A. with two alumni students, and she was on there as their therapist, sharing their stories, what led them to treatment and what the experience was like and whether or not it helped them. Each student told their stories and described what their life is like now. That seems a little out of bounds to me, considering that therapy really is a personal, private situation. Um, I don't know if I like that. It seems kind of coercive in, in a sense to get two students on the radio and, and with their therapist talking about their therapy. We'll see. So if we get into this L.A. talk radio show that aired September 12th, 2016 with Elena Chatterley, the description is this. Two of our alumni students, Elizabeth and Damon, and their therapist, Elena, will share their stories. What led them to treatment, what the experience was like for them, and did it help? Each student will tell their story and describe what their life is like now. Remember, this is in the presence of their therapist. Heritage's Elevate Academy is best for bright students with high potential who became lost in traditional academic settings. Heritage is an in industry leader treating teenagers with trauma commonly manifesting as attention deficit hyperactivity mood disorders, oppositional defiance, and substance issues. Equally unique, Heritage Peers Academy focuses on treating teenagers with social and learning disabilities, many of whom are diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, highly functioning autism, formerly known as Asperger's syndrome, nonverbal learning disorder, attention disorder, or anxiety disorder. The Peers Academy mentors are the only residential treatment center staff certified in the Peers Social Skills Model, including the 16 areas of emphasis designed to increase confidence gain self-awareness, and better manage emotions. And it goes on to explain how she was a trail walker for a wilderness program in Arizona, uh, enjoyed the connections made on regarding the natural consequences. Um, 
Elena believes the long-term nature of heritage provides an ideal environment for genuine internal change for teenagers. They can't fake it and instead have to tap deep within themselves for change that lasts, which means so much more success for them after they leave heritage. That is yet to be seen. So what is this PEERS program for adolescents? It's P-E-E-R-S trademark. It's the program for the education and enrichment of relational skills. And what it is, is an outside course. It's a 16-week evidence-based social skills intervention for motivated adolescents in middle school or high school who are interested in learning ways to help them make and keep friends. During each group session, adolescents are taught important social skills and are given the opportunity to practice these skills in session during socialization activities, e.g. playing sports, board games, etc. So it's really kind of a friendly get-together, learn how to make friends, sharing, that kind of thing. Um... Topic, uh, topics of instructions are how to use appropriate conversational skills, how to choose appropriate friends, how to appropriately, appropriately use electronic forms of communication, how to appropriately use humor and assess humor feedback, how to start, enter, and exit conversations between peers, how to organize successful get-togethers with friends, how to be a good sport when playing games and sports with friends, how to handle arguments and disagreements with friends and in relationships, how to handle rejection, teasing, bullying, rumors, gossip, and cyberbullying, how to change a bad reputation, what are the participation requirements, have friendship problems, you have to be a teen in middle or high school, teens must be interested in attending the program, Teens must agree to participate in the program voluntarily. Teens must consistently attend the program. And parents must be willing to participate. The initial intake appointment is $560 if using insurance. If your insurance company does not cover your program, we offer a reduced self-pay fee of $392 for the intake appointment. So this kind of goes against the program per se. This is also an outside program, but if the programs at Heritage are voluntary, as this is, then it seems it would be very difficult to enforce it um, because you really, as a teenager, have to be completely willing to do this and include parent participation Um, I don't see how that would go very well at a place like Heritage, which is isolated from parents and guardians. So that's definitely something else to look into. Next we have Joni Reynolds. She is the Elevate Academy principal. Joni has worked at Heritage since 1993. She says she always wanted to work with at-risk youth. She enjoys working with teenagers and learning from them with all of their energy and passion for various things. She has learned, quote, we are always learning and growing from each other's experiences, unquote. She says she enjoys seeing students succeed when they thought they never could and loves being a part of their journey in education. Joni came to Heritage right out of college and has spent her entire professional career at Heritage. She's been there for 26 years. She has a bachelor's degree in psychology and secondary education. So one of the interesting things about her quote is that she's talking about at-risk kids. But what we were just talking about and learning was that a lot of these children are supposed to be on the autism spectrum, which doesn't necessarily mean they're at risk whatsoever. So which is it? Is it autism or is it behavioral? Because those two things are not necessarily correlated. So let's move on. We have Tammy Harris. 
She is a spiritual care director and chaplain. Now, Tammy has been a chaplain in the residential treatment center setting since 1989. She's a board-certified clinical chaplain and pastoral counselor. More on that later. She has a master's degree in human services counseling, crisis response, and trauma. So where did she get this schooling? Oh, at Liberty University. You should look up Liberty University to uh, get some more information. And Provo Canyon School, that's where she did her pastoral counseling and conducting of interfaith worship services for 14 years she was a chaplain there. Okay. And she went to the University of Phoenix to get her BS in Human Services. Also not the most reputable school for any kind of thing like that. It's more of a business college, but... All right. Next we have... Dr. Kelly Wozniak, who is a nurse practitioner for 15 years. She's worked in the mental health and family medicine, graduated graduated with a doctor of nursing practice with an emphasis on mental health in the last three years. So Dr. Kelly Wozniak is a, a doctor nurse. She worked she works she works now at Bristol Health. She's the owner and nurse nurse practitioner from May 2015 to present for almost four years. She's the owner of Bristol Health, a clinic where we do mental health medication management in Orem, Utah. The medical director at WorkWell Clinics from 2014 to the present. She's the owner of WorkWell Clinics. She sets up on-site medical clinics for companies the medical director at Kelly Wozniak, Inc., from 2010 to the present for eight years. Medical director of Mountain Country Foods Clinic in Spanish Fork, Utah. An on-site medical clinic for Mountain Country Foods. She's a nurse practitioner. She was from 2004 to 2010 for six years at Central Utah Clinic. Nurse practitioner. Uh, several different places as a nurse practitioner. And she has a genetic disease, cladocranial dysplasia. It's a very rare, one in a million genetic disorder. It's often seen in, uh, frankly, in cases of inbreeding. Next we have Cherry Archer, RN. She is the medical director. Sherry entered the nursing field in 1990. Her desire to work with adolescents began when she saw the challenges they were facing and how they needed caring and compassionate help to overcome them. Sherry understands that it is important to refrain from labeling a child with a diagnosis. Now, that seems way out of bounds. As a medical director, as a nurse, refrain from labeling a child with a diagnosis. Well, How the heck are you going to understand what the child is going through without a diagnosis? There is absolutely no information on her schooling, on her work history, and judging from that statement that she thinks that it's important to refrain from labeling a child with a diagnosis makes me very wary of what it is that Cherie Archer RN is doing as a medical director of this place. No doctors, by the way. You have a doctor, nurse, that doesn't exactly count. Okay, we've got Rachel Luce, business development specialist. Uh, Rachel worked at Heritage for 13 years before becoming a business development specialist in 2016. No further information. Ian Peterson, business development director at Elevate Academy. Mr. Peterson began working at Heritage in January of 2008 during his last semester of undergraduate school. After years of feeling nudged towards work with teenagers, I decided 
that I had better try it out before jumping into my business career. So it looks like this guy was going into business, but someone said you should work with teens. And there is no information regarding his background. Then we have finally Neil Wallace, business development director at Peers Academy. Neil has been a part of the Heritage team since 2017 as the business development partner specifically over the Peers Academy. He started working in direct care with youth in 2010. With a younger brother on the autism spectrum, he found it easy to connect with students on the spectrum, build a rapport with them, and understand how they view life. Now, this leads me to the question, did Neil Wallace's brother attend a school like this? or a treatment center like this, or a, or a therapeutic boarding school like this, whatever you want to call it, and they call themselves many different things. I wonder if he went to someplace like this, or did he just make his way through life and become successful in his own right without having to spend $130,000 to $150,000 for 12 months of... Uh, attending a place like this and that is it as far as the staff is concerned now they call themselves a school but thus far and in none of the information that I could find were there any mention or any listing or any names of any teachers so that really makes me wonder what's going on here. There are a lot of social workers in the leadership team who seem to be running the place. There are admissions staff. There are business development people. But in no place on any of their literature on their websites is there any mention of any qualified teachers. Also, by state law, there should be a physician who works for this place on site, which there is not. So, so far, Heritage Academy is not really living up to their claims at all. And next we're going to get into kind of what they say they do uh, with each different kind, kind of academy or school on the campus. So that's next. So now let's take a look at the Peers Academy, one of the schools on the site. The Peers Academy provides residential treatment for neurodiverse adolescents, male and female, with autism spectrum disorder and other neurodevelopmental challenges. They say our focus is on skills development using a neurological framework and trauma-integrated approach. Program Overview. In the Peers Academy, we spark the neuropsychological growth and development of our students. Our passion for and understanding of neurodevelopmental processes inspires every intervention. With this intentional focus, we propel our students toward healthier and more effective horizons. These programs focus on three key areas of integral skill development, distress tolerance, adaptive skills, and skills necessary for navigating daily life. These areas of focus are highly interconnected, building synergistically upon each other. Even the best life skills cannot contribute to a healthy or effective future when combined with constant distress. The skills development process differs distinctively from learning principles or ideas. This process requires discipline, energy, and productivity sourced from within the students. So this sounds like a lot of psychobabble, frankly. And I really don't like the idea of distress tolerance because what that tells me is that they're putting these kids under duress to get them to adapt to harsh environments, which is absolutely not therapy. Next, they indicate something called skill scaffolding. Our 
Our skills-based SPARK program provides tangible direction and clarity for students as they develop and acquire distress tolerance, adaptive functioning, and life skills. In the moment, coaching provides effective feedback, helping students develop confidence and setting up an intrinsic success mentality. Trauma-Integrated Framework Our relationship-focused approach uses trauma-integrated framework to build and enhance healthy attachments. These relationships create a safe and therapeutic environment designed specifically to empower students to feel comfortable and confident as they develop healthier, more effective life skills. Neurological processes. We engage our students on their developmental level and expand conscientiously from there. With a professional understanding of neurological differences, our team guides the development of new neural pathways, increasing competency in the executive functioning domains of inhibition, initiation, flexibility, and perseverance. Individualized approach. Our multimodal program allows us to create treatment plans based on what we know to be effective for our students. Using innovative evidence-based practices, each student's plan is tailored to the specific skills and unique approaches they need. So <clears throat> that is the Peers Academy rundown from the Heritage School's website. And what's troubling to me is that it appears that the staff, the clinical staff, they're all uh, social workers. And social work is certainly different from what they're describing here. Um, especially regarding the neurological processes and things of that nature that are frankly more medical. Then we have uh, the Elevate Academy, and according to their literature, students in the Elevate Academy have faced adverse experiences that have negatively impacted their physical, emotional, and social well-being. As a result of their experiences, they have anxiety, attachment issues, are depressed, and are managing their feelings in unhealthy, dangerous, or self-destructive ways. They lost interest in activities they once enjoyed avoid school, and, ha and have distanced themselves from good friends, positive role models, and family members. So as I read this, I think to myself, where have these children experienced these adverse conditions? I mean, it's, it's a really important question to ask. Uh, they go on, why Elevate? The Elevate Academy targets the cause of diagnost diagnostic labels, the trauma the student has experienced. Combining the power of the heritage community with the more holistic and comprehensive approach to trauma, we transform detached and unmotivated teens into young adults who are engaged in life, empowered to live the lives they deserve, and who are resilient in the face of adversity. Again, where is all this adversity coming from? Who's fostering that adversity? Is it in fact the parents themselves, or does it really even exist? Now we'll look at some of the terms they use as kind of catchphrases to promote their program. The first word they use is engaged. Engaged in treatment and in life. Students who feel safe are present and engaged in their treatment, which allows them work to work through traumatic experiences and other emotional vulnerabilities. Engagement through adrenaline-producing adventure-based experiences allows the students to be present in the moment and to feel alive. Engagement through relationship building with mentors and peers begins the process of relationship restoration with family and friends. 
engagement in life through discovery or the rediscovery of healthy activities that the student is passionate about. An engagement in their education through an academic environment of excellence and rigor. So if we go through these phrases, engaged in treatment and life, well, they are certainly engaged in life, right? They, I mean, they, these kids, they're definitely doing things. Uh, it may not be what some people want them to do, but they are definitely present. Um, feeling safe. Um, well, did they not feel safe before? You know, that's something to look at. Why wouldn't they feel safe? Uh, adrenaline producing adventures. Well, we'll have to look into that a bit more. Uh, relationship building with mentors and peers. Um, essentially, they're saying that these kids don't really have friends, which I think is probably far from the truth. Uh, engagement in life through discovery or the rediscovery of healthy activities that the student is passionate about. I don't know what that has anything to do with with therapy. I mean, if they're trying to get kids to be passionate about things, that probably isn't going to work out too well because we're all individuals and are passionate about what we're passionate about and no one's going to change that. And finally, engagement in their education. They describe it as an academic environment of excellence and rigor and uh, that remains to be seen. The next word they use is empowered. They're empowered to live the lives they deserve. The empowering process takes place when a student understands their unique ecosystem and views themselves as competent and capable of setting and accomplishing goals. Empower, empowerment through intentional design treatment challenges. Empowerment, individual growth and heightened self-esteem by using strength-based approach. Empowerment by learning skills to set boundaries, advocate for self-nurture, supportive healthy relationships. Empowerment by facilitating an understanding of student choice and opportunities for students to select courses of actions from options. So when we go back and look at this, empower to live the life they deserve. What does that even mean? Um, a student understands their unique ecosystem and views themselves as competent and capable of setting and accomplishing goals. Is is that really the problem? Goal setting? Because that's something that can be accomplished without having to spend ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month on a boarding school. Certainly, uh, intentional design treatment challenges. I don't know what a treatment challenge is. Strength-based approach. Not sure what that means either. More uh, mumbo-jumbo. Uh, skills set boundaries, advocate for self-nurture and support of healthy relationships. Sure, we all, we all need friends and family. And apparently these kids have friends and family who sent them here. So that doesn't make a lot of sense either. And lastly, an empowerment by facilitating an understanding of student choices and opportunities for students to select courses of action. Well, these kids obviously have selected courses of actions on their own with help from their friends and family. Um, we all set course, courses of actions in our lives. Uh, and the last <clears throat> word they use to describe themselves is resilient. Resilient and determined to bounce back from past and future hardships. You can't really bounce 
back from a future hardship. It hasn't happened yet. And what hardship are we speaking of? Resilient students exhibit toughness and have the ability to bounce back during and after hardship. Well, that we just said again. Those who possess resiliency adapt as needed in the face of adversity and quickly return to a healthy level of functioning. So that again leads to the question, what's what's going on here regarding this whole resiliency question? They're trying to toughen up the kids in some fashion. And finally, the last academy or phase in this school is called launch. And the text reads, what comes next? Launch Launch is a short-term program that helps you create your life. Leaving a structured setting means the world is wide open and Launch is here to help you. Find your direction and start on your path to a successful life. The literature states, Launch staff engage students in exploring options and developing purpose and direction, launching them on a path toward successful adulthood. Launch students weather real-life challenges in a supportive environment increasing their ability to manage future setbacks on their own. Launch students emerge with a stronger identity after purposeful interaction within the community through schooling, hobbies, employment, technology, and more. Launch students weather real-life challenges. Got that. Launch clinical and psychiatric services provide therapeutic support to ensure that gains are achieved for lifelong success. And the launch staff is... Elaine Chatterley, we heard about her already, uh, LCSW, and she has been working in a therapeutic environment since 2002, claims to have a passion for helping students and their families find a, quote, normal level of dysfunction to sustain and maintain in real life. It wasn't until college that Elena realized that a degree for professional listener and helper, aka therapist, existed, which he pursued with full steam without looking back. Due to the roots from Elena's first therapeutic job as a field staff in a wilderness program, she continues to emphasize the natural consequences and client-driven treatment. Then we have John Stutzenegger. He grew up in Oklahoma, has a passion for helping others through hard times, to become the best version of themselves. John studied sports medicine in college and is a certified athletic trainer. Uh, John found Heritage as a college student and was musical director and percussionist for Heritage Musicals before working in the residential department. One of John's greatest honors was being a part of the team that developed Launch. And It doesn't seem that John has really the background for this, sports medicine and athletic trainer. It doesn't really match up with what they say this is all about. Then we have Stuart Gustafson. He's also a social worker. He's a clinical therapist who enjoys having a good laugh with the students. He finds the humor in life and wants people to learn to laugh. Uh, He dealt with his own academic challenges and severe learning disabilities. Stewart was able to put a lot of hard work into achieving both a bachelor's and master's degree in social work at BYU. Stewart's personal experiences helped him understand the complex challenges his students face. He has spent his long career working with persons, mostly teenagers, who struggle with anger, impulse control, addictions, and a myriad of psychological difficulties. During his 11 years at Heritage, Stewart was instrumental in helping build a program serving individuals on the autism spectrum. I don't see really any experience that would serve Again, the purpose of this launch program. And there's something interesting in his statement that he had severe learning disabilities of his own, 
but for some reason, apparently, he was able to put a lot of hard work into it and achieved without having to go through a place like this. And yet, he's working and advocating for heritage schools, which he and the founder both claim to have learning disabilities and struggles. They certainly didn't go to a therapeutic boarding school such as this. We've got Anna Pond. Anna enjoyed working as an EMT on the ambulances in Northern Colorado before earning her degree in recreation management. So that's her background. Then we have Shailen Worthen, who is a social worker. She has a bachelor's in social work. John Howard. Uh, It says John Howard is relatively new to launch, but has worked in residential treatment since 2002. That's all that it says about him. No, No background, no education. Jordan Moyes. Uh, Jordan was born and raised in Scottsdale, Arizona. He is currently attending Utah Valley University studying marketing, which doesn't really also seem to apply. Then we have Tyler Young. Tyler worked at the Heritage Community for a number of years before enthusiastically joining his talents to launch. He is well known on the Heritage campus as an attentive listener and encouraging mentor. His natural, cheerful temperament and patience are the qualities he relies on the most in building good relationships with all students. It looks like he is pursuing a pre-counseling degree, whatever that means. And he's on a path to apparently becoming a marriage and family therapist. So that is the launch staff. We'll leave the question of their qualifications up to you for further research, but it really doesn't appear that uh, they are who they say they are. So there are admissions qualifications to get into this final program at Heritage. You need to be between 16 and 17 years, 10 months at admission. So just a couple years before 18 Uh, They require a strong desire to be sober from substances and past problem behaviors. Consistent in independent ability to wake up on time, maintain personal hygiene, and follow simple instructions. Consistent emotions and behavior at a level where, where minimal crisis intervention is required. Free from suicidal ideation, self-harm, physical aggression toward others, or running away for the past six months. A desire for launch, help, and agrees to engage for four plus months. And financial ability. Launch services include psychiatric care, individual, family, and group therapy, 24-hour life coaching and support, and room and board. Transportation is provided when needed. Daily rates start at $260. So this is aside from the cost that you'd be paying to go to the other Heritage Academies. This is additional money that you'd be putting out for what sounds like very highly supported life. Um, You would think, or I would think, that if this therapy was real and accurate that this wouldn't be necessary whatsoever because it, it it leads to the question what is really going on at the peers in the Elevate Academies if launch needs to be so heavily structured like what's you know what's really going on again that question arises Thank you for listening to the V2V Podcast Survivor Series, The Heritage Community. Please stay tuned for part two when we get into some student testimonials and a bit of the financial information about this organization. And as always, thanks for watching.